It's the day after the Super Bowl, and whether or not you're nursing your wounds as a Denver Broncos fan, gloating around the water cooler as a Seattle Seahawks fan, probably at a tech company, or just really excited about the brand new Captain America 2 trailer like me because you're a huge nerd, this episode of An Idiot's Array has something for everybody. Football, Fassbender, Daddy Issues, and Deviled Eggs, it's time for the latest installment with nobody's favorite idiot, me. I'm sure, much to my father's chagrin, I've never been a big football fan. It always seemed like an overcomplicated, bloated, messy game that promoted brute force and with it, brute mentality. That may have stemmed from my dealings with football players in high school, that killer elite who ruled the hallways yet seemed so intellectually underwhelming. Coming from a family of highly intelligent people who put knowledge above everything, football, at the time, came off as a stupid and violent sport with a fandom of mouth-breathing Neanderthals who just like to beat their chest and paint their face and watch a bunch of overpaid, surly, testosterone and steroid-driven bullies run a funny-shaped ball across a muddy field every Sunday. I know now that my views on this weren't only extreme but incredibly wrong. Like many of the opinions you have in your late teens and early 20s, those days where you think you know everything and everyone over the age of 30 is an idiot, there comes a time where you take a long, hard look in the mirror, probably right around 25, and realize that you really don't know enough about something to have such a strong opinion about it. And to be honest, you really don't know much about anything. And this was the case with my transition from thinking football was beneath me to maybe a little bit beyond me. Sure, it's still an overcomplicated game that promotes brute force, but with it, it promotes a certain finesse, a certain understanding of human nature, and very, very calculating strategy. Sure, it's still a game where you can use idiots who are brute force as pawns to knock other players out of your way, but it seems to me like the quarterbacks, the real stars of the team, are always thoughtful, intelligent young men who have a grasp on the bigger picture I'm not sure that the rest of us would have in such a frantic and chaotic situation. Combine that with the aforementioned brutes and a few select support positions that have their own pretty impressive level of strategy, and what you end up is a pretty big, grassy chessboard where everyone plays a critical role. Still, I'm a stranger to the game. I still don't get it. I also don't get the fandom, although I guess I can compare it to my own kind's fandom for things like Star Wars and Marvel. I still don't understand the rules. They seem very complex. I thought I had a grasp on what a first down was, the name being pretty self-explanatory, until there was four of them consecutively. So I decided to take it to some of the biggest football fans I know and have them explain it to me like I was an idiot. Check it out. Right on. Hi, my name's Ungayo. Mm -hmm. Jeremy. Jeremy. Push for your Just pretend we haven't known each other for years. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> okay. What's up? Hi. What's your name? Thomas. Thomas, say your full name. Michael Davis. Say it all together. Thomas Michael Davis. Why well, has everyone else got to function at this and you're like the trained monkey? <laughs> Hi, I'm TJ. I'm Jeff Kassar. My name's Amy Palmero and I'm a football fan. So, what's your favorite team? Niners. I'm a 49ers fan, yes. Diehard Die 49ers fan. Um, no love for any other team. My team is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Who's your team, Thomas? Say it, it's the Denver Broncos. I have two favorite teams, San Francisco 49ers and whoever's playing the Cowboys. Yeah, they're the Yankees of football, and then everyone also, if you're not if you're not a you know, Texas resident or uh, Dallas specifically resident, then yeah, any anywhere else you live, you hate the Cowboys. People often hate the Patriots, mostly the Cowboys. Mostly the Cowboys. Mostly the Cowboys. The Cowboys are the black sheep of the, the NFL. Cowboys are the wearing white at home sheep. There's a conversation that actually I had with you that inspired the idea for this whole episode. Uh, oh, and uh, we were at a round table and you... I was like watching and like I noticed that you were just kind of looking at the wall. I was like, dude, you're not even watching this. Like, 
at least look at it. I know you don't understand it. <laughs> I just remember when they were about to hike the ball and the snap went off, and you're just like, I don't even know where I'm supposed to look right now. And I was <laughs> like, you never played John Madden? You're a nerd. I have not, I've taught ne- many I've, people football from John Madden. I have never football. played Madden. Not even no, Madden. No FIFA soccer? Nothing? No FIFA. The last football game I played was NFL Blitz on Nintendo 64. Wow. And that was just kind of, you know, sure, running into people. And just throwing violence. Yeah. Do you know what a safety is? No, I don't know. What's a safety? Uh... A safety would happen if Aaron Rodgers hiked the ball and he took a step into the end zone and one of the defensive players sacked him in the end zone. You know how much a safety's worth? How much? Two points. This is why you talk to a teacher, because they can explain it like you're five. The two points for getting a safety. Point, the signal is like this. It's like that. Get that. If you sack somebody in the end zone, they get two points, but do they get also the points they score? Nope, they just get the two points, only two. Why wouldn't they always do that? I, it's I, because it, it's so rare. It's just I don't even know why they even call it a safety. Like wouldn't they have a guy that's like, hey, they're gonna score, so just like they try them in the end zone all yeah. the time. Yeah, they try to. They do try and do that. Yeah, it just it rarely happens. It's not really a like a thing that generally happens. Okay. okay. I, I mean, there's certain things that you think you get the concept of, yep. like you're like, oh, first down makes sense, you know, from the name, and then there's three of them. There's four, four, four downs. Okay, so there's four of them. You get four downs you consecutively. Have, you go ten yards. You have four tries. Just think of it as four tries. Okay. To go ten yards. You get a first down. You want to get more first downs, but you want to get a touchdown. So a first down's good. Okay. But, but why do you get more? You don't get more. So you get first. So you get a first down. Okay. Right. It's first down when you first get the ball. Okay. Right. So you just got the punt. Right. And then you do your play. Okay. Right. So the the guys they run around and they try to move that ball. Right. So let's say they didn't get within 10 yards. They got five. Okay. That's second down. Okay. But say the next play, they get they get 10 yards. Many first downs. No, you want to get a fucking touchdown. (laughs) But the first down's not a bad thing. But you were saying so. But it's not. I'll call the first down. It's just a down. Oh my god. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. You want to get a touchdown? I've learned what downs are. Even though. Frustrated Jeff to no end. Yeah, I think you gave him Down syndrome. <laughs> and then, uh, you see, just trying to explain it to you is confusing me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to, to bring it down anymore. Okay, so automatic. So it starts. It starts. You can start the first down over. Well, you you. If there's a penalty on the play, you take the whole play over. I know it's starting to sound like cribbage, but people just make shit up. <laughs> Let me break it down for you in terms that I think you can understand. You know how when you're playing a video game. And if you're, you know, trying to do some sort of a mission or whatever, and it's, you know, it's a long, it's a long thing. And if you get killed, you don't have to go all the fuck the way back to the end of the, wherever you started from. Uh, you know, some video games have checkpoints built in. That's essentially what first downs are. It's a checkpoint. Every 10 yards you go, that's a new set of downs. So you get your first down all over again. It's another checkpoint. Okay. Okay. Up until you march your way up to the fucking end zone. I've taught a lot of nerds football from John Madden. Yeah. Yeah. And now they're fans because they, they know the strategy. They're like, oh, when the safety moves, I know I got one on one. Because that was my thing. Like, I'm sending this guy on a post. Growing up as a nerdy kid in high school, all you feel, all you see of football is, you know, that element of it. It's like Stratego for jocks. I don't know what else. What else? Tell me more things. Anything else? Um. Uh, watching football is the only time shouting racial slurs at the TV screen is permittable. That's still never permittable, Tom. Oh, <laughs> that's well, still that never case. permittable. <laughs> it's a healthy outlet for hatred and aggression. Well, Last year, I said some things around my mom that I, I had a hard time looking her in the eye the next your day. Your mom doesn't look at you the same anymore. No, but I, the way I look at it, it's forgivable because it's during football. So any vulgarities you scream at the TV. So it's, on, it's forgiven. So on fe- February 3rd, you get a completely clean slate. Yeah, 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 I think so. But what about basketball's going on? <laughs> what about that? And That's then, why you watch this by yourself. Baseball season. There's a lot of clean slates you get in one year. Yeah, Jeff. there is. It's a lot. <laughs> I'm still not sure, even after all that, that I understand the game. It was hard for me not to glaze over when Ngaio or Jeff was explaining something super technical. But that's okay. I learned some stuff. I know now more about safeties and punts and field goals and the Denver Broncos than I probably ever needed to or should know. It was a nice exercise, and I probably know enough now to sit down and figure out a game, at least enough not to be such a social pariah at family functions. But I'm still quite confused. But then again, what's the point of an idiot's array if I'm not being an idiot, right?
I really want to say thanks to the hilarious Ngai Obilum for taking some time out of his super busy schedule to sit down with me. Thanks to TJ from Bruised Thumbs for not only sitting down with us, but repping our episodes. Very special thanks to my bestest of friends, Amy, Jeff, and Tom. It was nice to see you guys. It's been way too long. Extra, extra thank you to Shady Lady Saloon and Ink Eats and Drinks. If you are not from the area and you ever find yourself in Midtown Sacramento, or if you are from the area and you've just never been, make sure to check both those places out. Shady Lady has some deviled eggs that are so good I'm pretty sure they're made by the actual devil. And Ink's boneless barbecue wings might be the best thing I've ever put in my mouth. They were super cool sports about a bunch of weirdos coming and filming interviews on their patios, and you should really go check them out. So that's it for my incredibly non-geek football episode. We'll be back in two weeks with something decidedly more nerdy, probably like an expose on Michael Fassbender's dong in the new Magneto costume or something. As always, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in two weeks. I'll be at the El Rio in San Francisco on February 15th. I'll be at the Momo Lounge on February 12th and February 9th in Sacramento. Just find me on Twitter, ngaio 420 All right, we'll put it up too. Thank well, you. thanks, buddy. Take care, man. Check out uh, check out brewstumps.com. Fun stuff. These guys' videos are on it. My band with Wolves has a show in March. That's a while. Uh, I don't know. It's over at the Boardwalk, I believe. It's the day before St. Patrick's Day. Okay. So whatever day that is. Uh, playing with a bunch of other bands be fun stuff. Cool. All right. Cool. Thanks for talking to me, buddy. Sweet. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yep, thank you. Yeah. P.S. Just wanted to remind you guys one more time to check out our amazing affiliates with this episode. Ngayo Bilam at Ngayo420 on Twitter and TJ Jorber. I just realized I don't know how to say his name, but I'm going to assume it's more French and less rhymes with Sherbert. At BrewsThumbs.com. Also, Ink Eats and Drinks at the corner of 28th and N and the Shady Lady Saloon at the corner of 14th and N, both in Midtown Sacramento. Also wanted to say hi to the people over at our Sacramento on Reddit, Matt. I wore my cheesiest outfit I could find just for you. And like any good football player, I'm retiring it forever after my Super Bowl episode. I also hope it satisfied that girl that said that I tried to dress like a douchey hipster but instead came off as a skeezy 70s slumlord. I mean, it doesn't get much skeezier than that. And also, it's the third in your rent is due. So if you liked us, hated us, or just thought we were mildly alright, don't forget to click subscribe and we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>